Raise your hand if you have ever voted. Well, for the women here, 100 years ago, you would not be raising your hand. Hello, my name is Talia Gonzalez, and I'm in Sunset Ranch Right 12. As you can tell, I'm going to be talking to you about women's voting rights. The fight for women to vote was not an overnight thing. It was dangerous and took commitment. First of all, the people who fought for women's rights to vote were men and women, and they were called suffragists. When it all started, it was in the early 1800s. In London was held the Anti-Slavery Convention. The only part was that just because of women's gender, they were not allowed in. Throughout 10 years, some women came together to start a group to fight for women's rights to vote. Around that time in New York, those women held the first women's rights convention. This group majorly helped women get the right to vote. People who played a big part in women wanting the right to vote were Susan B. Anthony, Alice Paul, Lucy Stone, Lucy Burns, Victoria Woodhull, and Frederick Douglass. Frederick Douglass actually helped found another organization called the American Equal Rights Association. There were many other organizations to support women's rights, but these two groups really supported the movement. Frederick Douglass actually ran for president in 1872, fighting for women's suffrage, with Victoria Woodhull by his side running for vice president. One thing I think I would never understand is that if women were allowed to run for vice president or president, then why would they not allowed to vote for president? The dangerous part about women getting the right to vote was that they could easily get arrested, heckled, or some kind of abuse for marching in front of the White House. One day they marched, they brought sashes and hung signs saying things like, Mr. President, how long must we wait for liberty? And Mr. President, what will you do for women's suffrage? One rally in front of the White House that affected women getting the right to vote was on March 3rd, 1913. This was the day before Woodrow Wilson's inauguration would take place. On the street where the parade would take place, thousands of women came together and marched down the street. This march was actually planned by the National American Suffrage Association. During these rallies and marches, women would sometimes get thrown in jail, where some would go on hunger strikes. Many women would go on hunger strikes so they could still help with the battle. This would sometimes end in women dying. All of their work paid off, though, and they were able to achieve their goal. In the end, 200 Republicans and 102 Democrats wanted the women to get the right to vote. On June 4th, 1919, the amendment was passed for the women's right to vote. The law was ratified on August 18th, 1920. The law for women getting the right to vote was the 19th Amendment. As it says in the amendment, the rights of citizens of the United States to vote should not be denied or abridged by the United States or by any state on account of gender. After women got the right to vote, Susan B. Anthony had said, it was we, the people, not we, the white male citizens, nor yet we, the male citizens, but we, the poor people, who formed the union. Men, their rights, and nothing more. Women, their rights, and nothing else. To this day, a lot has changed with women's rights. As you may know, we actually have a female vice president. As most of you know, her name is Kamala Harris, and she will be serving as vice president for the next three years. And she will be changing the way people see women one person at a time. Kamala Harris has written many books about her journey, as she is the first female, Asian American, and African American vice president. Kamala Harris actually got voted for vice president 100 years after when the law was ratified for women's voting rights. Even though there's still work to be done on how people see women, we have come a long way. Since women's suffrage, it has raised human welfare tremendously. I really hope that women can keep moving forward and getting more rights, since there is no disadvantage in what you can and can't do based on your gender. Women are powerful and they can do anything. Thank you and have a great day.